Welcome to City Center Church Online, where we exist to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. We're so glad you've tuned in today. We're extremely excited about this Transform series and the vision behind it to transform a life, to transform a church, and transform a city. Enjoy today's message. And that's the whole reason God has us in this amazing series called Transform. Because of what he's going to use us to do for thousands of people we've never met. Amen? So if you haven't, listen, if you haven't been here the last couple of weeks, I just want to make sure we're clear so that there's no confusion. I really believe you're here at the right time. Because we are in the middle, I believe, of the biggest, most important series that we've ever done as a church. And this is the Transform series that we've been in now for the fourth week. We have one more week, that's next week, and that's where we're going to go all in with what we believe that God's been talking to us about for weeks and for months, and we're trusting Jesus, amen? Where we go all in with our hearts, our minds, our soul, our resources, and we turn and we say, God, whatever you want, it belongs to you. So again, if you haven't heard, we're stepping into a a two-year financial commitment where we're trusting God with all of us, believing that God's going to use all of us to transform this facility and as a result he's going to transform our lives as we trust him in fact if you haven't seen let me just show you some of the um some of the slides of what some of these new areas are going to look like that's going to be the new check the check-in area for the kids going to be unbelievable just just look at these look at these pictures look at the quality i can't believe this is going to be our church so much new room so much area for growth opportunity for growth wider hallways Thank God every time you've bumped someone, you'll be thankful. We've actually had shoulders thrown out of, uh, out of you know, just dis, you know, dislocated. It's, it's bad. We've got to get wider hallways. I love it. These classrooms are going to give your kids an opportunity to, be, you know, to experience worship so that once they become teenagers and adults, they know what worship is. There's nothing more difficult than sometimes taking a 35-year-old individual or a 45-year-old individual. and it's, it's fine, but it's a lot easier or in teaching them about worship. When they've learned it all their life, it's just it's what they do. So we're going to teach your kids more and more because we don't babysit your kids. We disciple your kids. You need to know that. Listen, they're not back there popping goldfish and, and playing thumb work. They're back there learning who they are in Jesus, that Jesus forgives, loves, heals, fills, and delivers. That's what they're learning back there. Amen? Look, look at the, the 180 space. I mean, that's crazy. Of course, new cafe, unbelievable colors. I love the aesthetics. And Cafe, awesome. And let's throw them where I'm going to absolutely just, that's adult space. You all see the, uh, you all see the, the uh, basketball court? That's where I'll absolutely um, run roll a Pastor Cody. He ain't got nothing on my game. And um, this is going to be the new adult space upstairs. Opportunity for Celebrate Recovery. Um, um, you know, um, even have service up there. It's phenomenal. 250, 300 seats. Unbelievable new area for adults. But most importantly, new areas for the kids. More safety. More things that are necessary to secure our kids. And secure the safety of our young people. And that's going to be what's going to happen. And we're going to do it. Over two years, we're going to do it. And that is our Transform Initiative. That is what's so amazing about what is happening. And what we're doing is we are engaging Engaging ourselves and saying, God, what can you do through us? And we've ne- I've never been more determined to say, God, we're going to go all in with you. What can you do with a bunch of crazy radicals who trust you and, and implicitly who trust you with everything that you've called us to manage? What can you do through hearts? Thousands of people who say, God, not about us, no longer. It's about you. What would you have us do for the now and next generation? Again, we're not just talking about transforming facilities. We're talking about transforming your life through the opportunity of giving, sacrificing. I know it sounds crazy. I know people are like, oh, you're after money. No, no. We're after your heart, which is the whole idea behind anything God does. You don't know it now, but I'm going to tell you, you're going to thank God Almighty that we listened and obeyed Him because in the next two years, this is going to open up opportunities for God to bless you as you sacrifice areas that He's calling to sacrifice. I can't tell you what to sacrifice. That's between you and God. So listen, I want you to hear me, and I just... God gave me this point last night as I was putting my notes together. When you do this, when you jump all in with this transform initiative, when you start giving, and some of you have already started, don't be surprised by the attacks. But also, don't be surprised by the answers. Don't be surprised with how much God starts showing up. Listen, we've already got folks that are talking about, listen, I've been waiting for years 
Nothing's happened. And all of a sudden, in a matter of weeks, since I've committed to God, stuff he's laid in my heart, I'm already getting opportunities at my job, financial opportunities. God is reconciling me and family members. It's amazing what God does when you go all in with Jesus. Not about me, but it's about you. Because we're going to say yes to God, to leave a yes God legacy for this church and for surrounding areas. Amen? Because it all comes back to souls. It all comes back to us being transformed in our heart, our body, our mind, our soul. Money's part of it. A building is part of it. Missions is part of it. But the bigger picture is that all of us, every single one of us, takes part in this. It says, God, we will, I will go all in with you. And I'm not going to let my age, my background, or my current situation be a hindering, or a hinder, just a hindrance. I'm going to trust you because if you said it, you'll do it. In fact, that brings me to a point I just want you to hear, and this is the point I really want to sell you on today, if, that, if I could even use that term. And hopefully you brought your books. I've been asking you to bring your transformed books. We've handed them out already. So if you brought your books, I'm going to encourage you real quick to open up to the notes section, to session four and page 62. I'm going to ask you in that section of your notes on page 62 to write down, I, I believe, the main point that God wants to drill down in every single one of our hearts today. And that is this. God doesn't want more of you. See, we used to sing, sing those songs. No, God doesn't want more of you. He wants all of you. This isn't about what more you can give God. God already has everything. He owns everything. He wants all of you. Now, after you've written it down, look at your neighbor and say, listen, God doesn't want more of you. Come on. God wants all of you. I'm going to tell you, city center, this is the type of challenge and promise that God gave Abraham right before he made a covenant with him. And God is saying the same to us. He doesn't want more of us. He wants all of us. That means he's about to make a covenant church. Listen, listen, a blessing with us. I want you to listen to what God did with Abraham in Genesis 17. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I'm El Shaddai, God Almighty. This literally means that he's the all-sufficient one. In other words, can I remind you and remind that doubt that's been trying to whisper to you the last few weeks that when you've been coming here or whether you've been here or not, there is no lack in God. God can't spell lack. God's so powerful, if he tells a lie, it has to become truth. God's never had an original thought. It all came from God. It says, serve me faithfully and live a blameless life. To me, that sounds like God is saying to Abraham, hey, I'm not asking for more. I'm asking for you to go all in. I'm asking for all of you. Blameless before me completely. I will make a covenant with you by which I will guarantee to give you countless descendants. At this, Abram fell face down on the ground. In other words, he's postured himself for full surrender to the Father. Full surrender to God Almighty. And he's saying, I know you're El Shaddai. I know you're Almighty God. And I surrender my life to full trust. I surrender right now in this moment at this very place. And then God said to him, this is my covenant with you. I'll make you the father of a multitude of nations. What's more, I am changing your name. It will no longer be Abram. Instead, you will be called Abraham, for you will be the father of many nations. I will make you extremely fruitful, and your descendants will become many nations, and kings will be among them. Now, this passage describes to us a moment of incredible transformation in Abram's life. Because God comes to him and says to him, I am your God. Let me tell you who I am. I am El Shaddai. I'm the all-sufficient God. There is no lack in me. I am almighty God. And what's impossible with you is possible in me. And so God says, says I'm, I'm asking you, I'm challenging you. And he's doing the same thing for all of us at this church to give your all to me. Don't just give me more, but give me all of who you are. And after this, he gave them this covenant promise. He says, I'm going to make you blessed, and I'm going to cause you to have kids that are going to become a great nation. Not just one nation, but many nations. And the whole world is going to be blessed because of your descendants. That's a pretty big promise, ladies and gentlemen. 99 years old. 
stuff stops working years before that. You think whatever you want. I was talking about the mind. 99 years old. Now you're going to start really being used by God. Some of you have, have, have become so consumed with this retire mindset. You're just 65 or 80. That's young. Well, you wait till you see what you feel like when you're this old. I'm believing in God. I'm going to feel better. Been saying this since I was since I was a teenager. In fact, I told my wife. I mean, we'll talk about it. She goes, "Mad at a hundred. I said, "Babe, we're still going to be going." She goes, "Well, you might need to be going on by yourself because I'm ready to go to Jesus." So it's something we just talk about and, and have fun with. But at 99 years old, listen, you are never called to retire. You're called to retire from self care. Give it all to Jesus. 99 years old, only God could ask this, and only God could fulfill this promise. And so listen, it's a, it's a bit embarrassing, because Abram means exalted father. So every time he's been called Abram, hey, exalted father, and he doesn't have a kid, you wonder, are people talking about me? Are they exchanging texts about me? I mean, is my name being dragged through the mud in a bunch of group texts? I mean, where is God in this? How come I'm so embarrassed? Some of you are right there right now. God, why haven't you done what you said? I'm embarrassed by the fact I've gone all in on a promise you said you'd fulfill, and I feel lonely. You told me to trust you for a new job. You told me to trust you for my marriage. You told me to trust you for my child. You told me to trust you for my finances. And I've never been more broke. I've never been more lonely. I've never been more bothered. I've never been more upset. Where are you when you said you'd show up? And I ain't 99. I'm 45, but I'm about to give up. So God comes on the scene like he does. Just kind of strolling in with that George Jefferson swag. We're like, where is God? He's like, I'm right on time. He says, I, I know what I promised you, and I know it's impossible for you in the flesh. And we're like, uh, yeah, but what's impossible for you and what the doctors can't do, I'm going to do. Because I specialize in resurrections. I specialize in the impossibilities of what people say can't be done. Even God can do. You know, the greatest scene your situation could ever shout at you or someone around you could say, they could say to you is, not even God could do that. I'm going to say, that gets God's attention. I love when people say God can't. I, I, mean, I, mean, I, I mean, I take a step back. I'm like, oh, God, don't strike him down. And I wait and I watch for God to do what only he can in Jesus' name. So here's what God does. He says, I'm going to change your name. I'm going to change your name to Abraham. So from exalted father to father of many nations. So you ain't even got a kid. Now you're going to have millions now you've lost it. Why don't you, God, why don't you um, have one of your angels go by CVS and pick up some Xanax? Because you've, you've lost your mind. I ain't got a son yet. And you said I'm going to have millions? I mean, I'm, 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 I'm going to be a father of nations? I'm not even a father of one. And how many of you know that when God says something, because he's all-powerful, it happens? It comes into existence. When God spoke light, when God spoke planets, they happened. So whatever he says becomes what he wants. And so he says, Abram, you're now Abraham. You are now the father of many nations. And because God declared it, it is now so. So God's word, I think we need to let's just agree on this point. God's word works. And I want to tell you, you cannot help but become who God says you are. Listen, you're trying right now. The reason you're stuck is because you're trying to fulfill the destiny that someone has assigned to you. God didn't create that destiny for you. That's why you haven't yet become who God said you can become. Because when God said you can become it, everything you need to become that already is in you through Jesus. See, when we look back, we know historically that is exactly what happened with Abram. He became Abraham. Not just a name. But listen, Abraham had a son named Isaac. Isaac had a son named Jacob. Jacob had an encounter with God where he became Israel. Israel had 12 sons, and they became the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. And Judah was one of the sons and had, and had kids. And one of Judah's descendants was the line of Judah, Jesus Christ, who came in the flesh and died for all humanity and rose from the, gra rose from the grave and sits at the right hand of the Father right now. And became a blessing to all people on the planet. That's a great nation that blessed everybody. Matt, hold on, Matt. You said he's a father of many nations. Well, that sounds like just one. Well, through Sarai's servant Hagar, he had Ishmael, and Ishmael became the father of all Arab nations, so all the Arab nations are descendants of Abraham. 
Even though he was 99 years old and didn't have a son, God declares something and he speaks a name over somebody and it is now what he said you would become. Right now, listen, God is saying, in this place, I hope you get this, church, in this place, the transform initiative is bigger than the building. It's not just a building. Listen, it's not just about building you. God wants to use us to build your faith. I pray you don't, you quit yawning your way through Sunday services. You quit yawning your way through series. You get excited about coming. God, what else are you going to have me give? Because I can't wait to see what you do on the other side of your commandment. Because what you said, it shall become so. When you, listen, when you go through the process of praying and saying, God, I'm going to give you anything. When you, listen, when you take that commitment card, which every one of you should have received. When you take that commitment card and you say to God, God, I will give you any amount of money you want me to give. You might as well be saying, God, I give you my whole life. Because money is so, it's, it's so closely connected to all of us. It's, it's, it's a big deal. I mean, we, we like our money. We love dead presidents. We love green paper. So when we say, God, I will give you everything, we're actually saying, God, I will give you everything. I mean, are you grasping this? Does anybody understand what I'm talking about? But, but listen, but not saying, God, I will do anything and give everything is the same fear holding your heart back and saying, I don't know if I can trust you. I don't know if you'll provide. I know you came through on my daughter's cancer. I know I saw somebody raised from the dead. I know grandma got a hearing back, but I don't know if you could come through on this because it involves my money. We're glad to see God do it for everybody else, but when he asks big from you, we get a little shallow in our trust. And this is the process we're in right now. That as we're praying, I pray, I pray you're praying. If you've never prayed, I pray you're praying now. That I believe that God is bringing us into a place where he says, I don't want more of you, I want all of you. He's asking every single one of you right now, do you trust me completely? Do you or do you not believe that I am El Shaddai, the all-sufficient God? Do you or do you not believe that I am almighty and what I say is true? Do you or do you not believe that I am for you, I am with you, I'm not against you, I will guide you, I'll protect you, I'll provide for you. I am God or am I not God to you? Am I only God when it's, when it, when it's, when it's light? Am I only God when you get a zero at the end of your check? Am I only God when you get a day off? Am I only God when the right person gets voted in? When am I God? We often live, listen, we shortchange God because we live broken faith-based lives. Listen, half obedience is still full disobedience. You're called to every day, and you'll make your mistakes. God, what do you want from me? You mess up, get back up, start again. That's how trust and faith happens. Do you believe that God is going to do what he's asking you to do in this initiative, in and through your life. He's going to want to tell you right now, he's going to give each and every one of you a new name. He's going to speak and reveal himself as El Shaddai. You're going to see God. Listen, he's El Shaddai. He's not El Chipo. He's El Shaddai. Everything you need, God has in store for you. And it's going to transform your life. It's going to transform my life. And it's going to transform this entire church. He says, you're no longer a man of fear. You're a man of faith. You're no longer a warrior as a woman. You're a warrior as a woman. He says, listen, listen, you're a person of integrity. Listen, you're not greedy, you're generous. You don't lack integrity, you trust me, and you're full of integrity. He's looking at some of you right now, you've never been called these things. I'm calling it out, I'm calling you out. You're a man and woman of God. You're a man and woman of trust. You're a man and woman of faith. I know what your last few years have looked like. I know what your last few months have looked like, but your name's gonna get changed through this transform initiative. You're gonna begin to trust God and go all in with God. God's gonna change your name through this all in. As you say, God, I trust you explicitly. I trust you completely. And whatever you need to use to transform me, I'm willing. And he declares this over you. And when he does, and you receive it by faith, and you believe in it, and you walk in it, you become what he said. It ain't what your daddy called you. I know there's been some crazy, some of you have expressed some horrible abuse by, by loved ones, by authority figures. It's not what your mama called you. It's not what your teacher called you. It's not what your ex called you. It's not what even you call yourself and even think and be how you view yourself. It's when you hear El Shaddai say, you are. And if you believe that, you become what he says. Come on. There is transformation taking place in the hearts of his people in this church. That if you will engage yourself in this transform initiative, he is going to transform you and you'll never be the same. The church will never be the same. I'll never be the same. And we'll look back and thank God so much that we were willing to count the cost and trust him with everything. Because 
Only he can do what we're asking him to do. He's calling us all in. Some of us have been halfway over the past few months, past few years. I mean, I, mean, I appreciate you know, the tours' um, transparency. They're going to take a break. I turn into a couple months. I turn into six months. I turn into a few years. And it's so easy. Listen, you're, you're, I've, I've always said you're always one decision away from your next habit. You know, you know, I'll, I'll, take, you know I'll take a week off. I'll come back. And then we see you, in, you know, ne- next Easter. How, how's your break? Are you rested? I mean, I mean, I mean hey, I've done, I, mean, I remember doing that before, before I was ever on staff, back in my 20s. I took off one Sunday. I'm going to tell you, the next Sunday, it was like pulling teeth to get me to go back. And it, it don't take much. It, it, it's amazing that, you know, your kids are up. Can I, get, can, can I get a witness from some parents? Your kids are up every day at 5.30 and 6 a.m. But they sleep till 10 on Sundays. Say what you want. I don't know what happened. I don't know what they put in Fruit Loops. But I mean, I want to tell you, it sedates them. It's crazy. But we're asking God, God, what would you have us do? And I want you to hear me. The primary goal, I, I really hope you hear me on this. The primary goal is not 13.7 million. It's not the primary goal. The primary goal is that every single person that calls this their church home is all in for God with everything, their heart and their soul. That's, that, that's the primary goal. Luke 6.38, Jesus speaks and says this, Given will be given back to you, pressed down, shaken together, running over, that men would pour it out into your lap and give back to you. And the same measure you give, it will be given back to you. Jesus said this. Jesus said this. So if you give to the things of the kingdom, and you give for God, and you give to the eternal things of God, God says, it is my promise to you, I will return and give back to you so that you can do what? Give again. So that when you give again, you'll get again at a higher level so that you can give at a higher level and then get at a higher level and then give. It all ends with give. You constantly are giving. He blesses you more. You give more and more because he has all of you. Because God said, if I can trust you, you know, not just to be a conduit, but if I can trust you with more, I'm going to bless you because I can trust you with the more I've been giving you. Listen, see, often we give out and we think, if I keep giving, how am I going to have enough to just exist on? I mean, that, that's where our mind goes. Every single time you give, I'm going to tell you, according to God, it's going to come back and replenish. So you can give again and be replenished to give again and be replenished. That's the way it works with the kingdom. God is saying, the moment you give out, I've already got a plan to give you more. And listen, if you're saying he's talking about money again, nope. The money is the heart. The money follows the heart. So when you, listen, when you say, God, I'll give you anything you want, you're really saying, I'll give you everything I am because it belongs to you anyway. Amen. Let me be, again, let me be clear. The primary goal here is not 13.7 million. The primary goal is that every person in this church would go all in and not just give more, but give all of them to Jesus. Amen. I'll put it to you this way. Next week, we're bringing our commitment cards. What we've been praying about for weeks and for months. And if we don't hit 13.7 million, but every person in this church has gone all in, you prayed and you've asked God. And I, and I see some of you will come down maybe even with tears in your eyes. You're excited. This is what we're trusting God with, Pastor. We've been asking God for months. We don't know how, but we're trusting God. We're all in. You're excited. I see smiles in your face. And you've done it even with trepidation in your heart. You'll see the happiest pastor in the world. But, because I'll, I'll tell you this, if we all go all in, he's going to come through. That, that's why I'm not worried. But if we bring in 15 million, more than a million over, but we've been flipping, and not everybody has caught this vision, we've missed the entire point. So, it's not about money, it's about all of us going all in to say, God, what would you have us do for your kingdom to trust you with the invisible and the unknown? That's what it's all about. Amen. Yes. The whole point of this is for it to be a catalyst for your hearts to go all in. So you walk in a covenant blessing. This is what it's about, going all in with Jesus. So how do you do it? Well, it's really simple. 
If you're single, it's really easy. You, just talk, you talk to Jesus this week. If you haven't been talking to Jesus, you talk to Jesus. And you ask him, what, um, well, what would you have me do? If you're married, you start today. You start, and when you get in the car, you start soon. And you say, honey, um, we need to pray. We need to ask God. And you go to God together. And you say, listen, we're going to schedule time to come back after we've been spending some time in prayer. Maybe it's Tuesday night after dinner, after the kids go to you know, bed. You know, if you don't have, have kids, you know, after you've done watching your Netflix show. And you compare notes. That's what I believe God's telling me to do. That's what I believe God's telling us to do. If you haven't heard anything, keep praying. But listen, before you leave this room, before you get in the, I mean, when you get in the car, whenever, soon, husbands, wives, look at each other. First of all, some of you haven't talked in a while. This is going to be a great thing. And you determine to go all in for God no matter what. No matter what you think, no matter what you feel, I'm going to trust God. And you're going to pray, God, as for me and my house, we're going to serve you. Whatever you want, we're going to do. And then you're going to, then you're going to commit to each other. And you're going to pray separately. And they're going to come next week and say, God, here's my card. Here's our card. Here's our heart. We give you anything you want, which means I'm giving you everything. We're giving you everything. And we trust you that whatever you call us to do, you are El Shaddai. You will provide everything we need to do, you will do, and then some. Because you are faithful and you are that good. And I will tell you, God will speak to you. And I'm going to tell you, you'll have a, listen, you'll have a thought in your mind. And you might think, is this God or, or, or was that God? You'll, you'll, you'll get those thoughts. And your wife or your spouse might be getting the same thing. But they're praying as well. And they're asking God, what decision do you want us to make? And you get together and you trust God. I've said this before, I want to repeat it. Go beyond the number that's pleasing to you and discover the number that's pleasing to him. Go beyond the number that's pleasing to you and go after the number that's pleasing to God. Because there isn't anything in the world like coming in, knowing that, knowing that what God wants from you, you're following and you're trusting him. You're like, I wrote it down. I don't know how, but I wrote it down. We're going to trust God. We're going to believe God. We're going to go all in. I don't know what God's going to use us to do, but I know it's going to be big because we cannot do this on our own. We're all in. I'll be honest with you. Over the past few weeks, I've really battled a lot of fear with this. I wonder, God, have we bit off more than we can chew? I'm just being honest with you. What about if not everybody gets it? What about if some people miss out that you, know, that you want to use us to bless them? God, I don't, want, I don't want to see anyone miss out in our church. God, how are you going to do it? Because I, only God can do this. I'm just being honest with you. And I don't want the people of our church to miss out on the promise and wonder in the desert spiritually. In, in, in any area of their life because they missed out on the opportunity that God was asking them to go all in on. Some of you all remember about Moses and, and the people of Israel and God had delivered them out of Egyptian bondage. And he had done miracle after miracle after miracle for the people. And they now come into the promised land and God says, I want to give this to you. And they get there and, and they're like, they're scared of giants. They're scared of fortified, fortified cities and armies. And they miss out on the promise because all that God had done, they had forgotten, and then they had finally come to the promise that God had brought them all the way through to enjoy, and they never enjoyed it. They missed it because they were afraid of men. Instead of fearing God and trusting God, they were afraid of what men might think or what their mind, you know, or what their mind saying or what, what, or what their bank account might look like. And Moses gets up and he pleads with them. He says, how, how could we have come this far? I mean, how could have God done all this for us, and, 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 now, we're, and now we're not going to start trusting him? Don't let your hearts be hardened and don't give in to your fears. I will tell you, God is well able to give us this promise, church. And it's the same thing the Spirit of God is within me saying to you today. Don't let the things of this world make you afraid. Don't be afraid. Go all in with God. Trust in El Shaddai. Don't be afraid. Don't let your heart capsize with fear. Go all in with the one who will never leave you, who will never fail you, and never has, and he'll never let you down, and that is Jesus Christ. My prayer for you is, oh God, don't let them miss it. Don't let one person, one child, one individual, one couple miss this opportunity 
because it's not about money. I'm like, God, oh Lord, let them understand that when they submit everything to you, including their money, then they've given everything to you. God, let them understand it's about coming to you with confidence and putting fear aside and unbelief aside and saying, God, I've got so many feelings coursing through my veins, but I'm going to trust you regardless. I came across the scripture, the scripture this morning. I just wanted to share it with you in Psalms 25. In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame. Nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame. But shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Verse 12. Who then are those who fear the Lord? He will instruct them in the ways they should choose. They will spend their days in prosperity, and their descendants will inherit the land. The Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. So he says, point out the road for me to follow. Lead me by your truth and teach me, for you are the God who saves me. I choose all day long to put my hope in you. Then it goes, who are those who fear the Lord? And it's what, those who what? He shows them the path that they should choose. He shows them what they should do. And it says they will do it. They will, they will do this. They will live in prosperity and their children will inherit the land. That means the next generation. That means what you're going to do right now. What God is asking you to do right now with the all-in effort, all-in trust you are doing. The next generation, the now generation is going to see your dedication. They're, listen, we're going to hand this to them. My, my, my desire is that we hand this all to them, pay for, debt-free down the road. Because one day they're going to pass this. One day they're going to run it, and we're just going to sit back and enjoy what all that God used us to do, and now we're cheering them on. A legacy of trust and honoring God. Everything God's asking you to do, he will come through if you'll trust him. He will teach you his covenant, which means he will reveal to you over and over again, he is El Shaddai. He will never let you down. I'm going to be real quick with one thing. And then I'm, I really feel like I'm, I want to do this before I let you all go. Real quick, if you're here this morning and you're not where you should be with Jesus, you say, Matt, would you pray for me? I want to make sure I'm right with Christ before I leave this auditorium. If that's you, would you mind just shooting up your hand real quick? Thank you. Who else? God bless you. Who else? God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. In the back, God bless you. Appreciate it. Appreciate your... I, I, thanks, thanks for being transparent. So, God, look at people just go. Just go crazy. And eyes are open. Like, that's when you know people are really crazy about going all in Jesus because we had eyes open. Sometimes it's eyes shut. I'm proud of each and every one of you. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father... I invite Jesus into my life to become my Lord and Savior. I confess my sins before you. And your Bible promises me that what I confess, you forgive. Fill me with your spirit and direct my steps. I trust you. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Now, listen. You pray that prayer. I want to encourage you to text the word NEXT, N-E-X-T, to 913-701-3889. Follow those promptings. It'll bless you. We really hope you enjoyed today's message. Listen, if God used this message to impact your life, would you let us know in the comments below? It means so much to us when we hear from you. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow us on all of our social media platforms.